praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it's been such a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord uh, since we began this meeting two days ago. The deluge, I would say, or the torrents of the word of God and the counsel of God that has been coming uh, is very humbling and uh, I am full of praise to God. I'm thankful to God. Uh, it's clear in my mind that this is not an ordinary meeting. Uh, it's clear in my mind that this is, this meeting is a threshold. Uh, this meeting is significant. Uh, you only need to listen to the Spirit and listen to the voice, listen to the passion, listen to the words that are coming. Uh, you know that this is a special meeting. This is a meeting um, that God intends to uh, move his people forward with. So I, I believe that there is a timing, a divine timing involved. Uh, I believe that this is a special time. The uh, Bible says that God moves in times and in season. It said God who in sundry times and Seasons has spoken to us. He's spoken to us at sundry times. Has in these last days spoken to us and his son. I believe that this is, this is a very special time. Uh, and it's, it's very important for us to discern the time appropriately. It's very important for us to um, harness the benefits of the time. He said, ask the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So there's a time. And when you position yourself properly and you ask in the time of the latter rain, then you get. So, so I, I really believe that um, this is a special timing in God for us as a people. I believe that God wants to move his people forward and we need to discern the times. Uh, one of the things that bothered Jesus was the fact that he was concerned that the people, scripture says he came, as he came close to the city and he beheld the city, he wept. And why did he weep? He wept because the people could not discern the time of their visitation. They, they, didn't, they didn't pick the time of their visitation. And he said to them, he said, how often would I have wanted to gather you like, like a mother hen will gather her chicken and put you together? He said, but you would not because they didn't discern the time appropriately. So, so I believe it's important for us to uh, discern these times that we're in and pray that the Almighty God will help us uh, to make the best of this time uh, so that we can move forward in the things that he wants us to achieve. Um, he said, of times and of season, I, I don't want you to be ignorant. You shouldn't be ignorant because we should know the time. So, I believe, as I, as I wait on the Lord in my spirit, that this is a time for us as a people um, to move into another dimension altogether. This is a time for us to um, um, get our hearts together and on the God move in the direction that God wants us to move. Um, um, that it is 30 years, I believe, is significant. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, I know that uh, the Almighty God himself is bringing us to fullness. I believe he's bringing us to a time when we shall actually sit on the throne and reign uh, fully and reign over the whole of Israel. Each time as I think and I meditate you know, I, I think of David. I think of um, the anointings of David. I think of how David started. 
And um, as we reflect on what happened some 30 years ago, I thought about the anointing, first anointing of David. Uh, David was anointed in his father's house. Um, it was a very private thing. It was almost done in secret. Um, there were no, um, it wasn't done in pomp and pigeonry. It wasn't done in the open. It was done in, in, in a quiet way. And, and, and that's the way the work began. And as I thought about this work too, I thought about how we began uh, some 30 years ago. It was a very quiet walk, a quiet meeting. Uh, I think it was Brother Sam that was speaking, and he was talking about the fact that uh, the hall that we used at that time is probably a quarter of this, wall, this, this hall that we are sitting in. And uh, there were probably less than 150 people in that meeting at that time. You know, and I thought about how David was anointing, the first anointing of David in his father's house. God told uh, Samuel, he said, for how long will you continue to mourn for Saul? Seeing that I have done what? I have rejected him as king over Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. That was, that was a landmark. That was, that was a transition. He said, I have rejected Saul as king over the whole of Israel. And then he told him, he said, go to the house of Jesse and anoint for me another king that will be king over all of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. And I looked at the story again. I saw how even Samuel was a bit uh, jittery and reluctant about it. Uh, and I know the events that led to that 89 meeting. That was a time when the court of Pentecost was, uh, was getting one of its biggest boosts. That was the time when the ministries were coming up and there was a lot of big bang in the court of Pentecost at that time. But God had a word. He said, I have rejected Saul. He said, anoint for me a king that will be king over all of Israel. And Samuel said to the Lord, he said, how would I do such a thing when Saul is still there? He said, if Saul sees me, he is going to do what? He will kill me. <laughs> he will kill me. That's how, how subtle and how quiet the beginning of this work was. And uh, the Lord said to him, that's fine. You're going to take a heifer, go as if you're going to sacrifice. And then you will then go ahead and do. But it was landmark for God. It was at the end of an era. God was raising a walk. And I thought about the simplicity of this walk. I thought about all that we have gone through as a people. I thought about the way there was no trappings. There was no, there was nothing grandiose about this work. The city of Ede is a rugged city tucked somewhere in the corner of the place that you have to drive through some unpaved road, roads that are not even tarred. It wasn't, the meetings didn't have posters. They were not advertised. Uh, there were no social medias then at that time. And uh, it, I just thought about the simplicity, uh, how God sparked up that work, uh, how that work began in one little corner of the place, hallelujah, and, 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 and the Lord began to strengthen that work. So each time I think of where we are now, I think of the three anointings of David. I think of the fact that David was anointed in his father's house, and then secondly, he was anointed, the men of Judah at some point came, and they said to David, we will make you king over Judah. And David was anointed king over Judah. But the word that God gave was that he will raise a king over Israel. And that David was going to become king over all 
of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, David went through so many things and eventually it was time for him to be anointed king over all of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. And as I think about where we are now, he, he ruled in Judah for about three and a half years and then he became in Hebron, all the people came together and they made him king. He was 30 years old when he was made king over the whole of Israel. And he ruled for another 40 years, 37 years plus the three and a half years that he had in Judah. And that became a total of uh, 70 years as a, as a whole. So I, I believe that and seven is the rest of God. I believe that as I think of where we are now, I think of the fact that God wants us to step in to reign over the whole of Israel. I believe that the timing is, 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 is right. And I believe that God wants to reposition us. He wants to anoint us afresh. And that's why he's speaking the way that he's speaking to us. He needs to prepare us. And I, I began to draw a lot of parallel between David and what happened to him and how he finally became king over all of Israel. The events that happened at the end that led him and made him to become king over all of Israel. And I'm going to be I want us to look at the principles and um, David's anointing. David's anointing as king over all of Israel. The lessons for us, for the church right now. Uh, there were a number of things that God required. There were a number of things that happened at that time. And those things all came together. Uh, and they became what created the atmosphere for David to step in. In other words, we have only just begun. Uh, I believe that the next phase we're entering into is a, is a phase of fullness. I believe it's a phase of ruling. As it were, we have gone through the first anointing. The second one, we ruled over parts of, of Judah, but it's time to rule over the whole of Israel. I believe that th this walk is not meant to be a, a sideline walk. Uh, it's not meant to be um, something that is hidden in one little corner. I believe the time has come for it to become a mainstream walk. Praise the name of the Lord. Because David was made king over all of Israel. And I believe that there is a David in the house today and the time for that David to step up and to rule over all of Israel, that time is here. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the weight that I feel when I look at the timing and I look at where we are at the present moment. And uh, uh, I think someone was also speaking and he said, look, we almost missed this timing. Uh, and the enemy always would want us to not to miss the timing. We thank God that God helped us. And there was no way we could miss this particular timing because uh, I believe it's crucial and it's important for all of us. So the Lord himself would help us. So much has been said already. And uh, I'm just asking the Lord to help me to bring a few more things to add to uh, the things that have been said and the things that will help us because we cannot afford not to get it right at this point. Uh, this is critical. Uh, this is midnight and somehow God allows the midnight to come and it's at midnight that the cry is made at midnight. God allows the troubles to come. Uh, the temple will be built in troublous times. Uh, God allows the situation to come when we are almost uh, having our backs to the world, when everything is almost tough and difficult. 
It's at that time that God comes in. And reading the timing, I look at everything that is going on around us. I look at the, the positioning around us in the country today. I look at the tension that we see all around us. All that is part of, part of the, part of the arithmetic. All that is the part of God's plan and God's program. And when we stand as a spiritual people, we need to be able to look at it and have a big picture. I have no doubt in my mind that this is midnight. And I have no doubt that God is visiting his people in this midnight hour. I believe that there is a call for us to wake up. There's a call for us to um, get our acts together because the night is far spent and the day is at hand. And all that we see around us happening today, the pressures that we're witnessing as a country, as a people, uh, it probably has not been as challenging as uh, it is today, any time in the history of this country. Uh, it is arguable. There are lots of things that are happening. There are lots of things that cannot be explained. Um, the government that is in place does not have control. There are so many things that are hazy. There are so many things that are confusing. There are, there are the church world is, is getting into darkness, is getting darker and darker. There's abomination in the holy place and the entire place is in darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's in this midnight hour that God is visiting his people. Hallelujah. God is bringing out a people that will fulfill his plan. Uh, and we are right at the threshold of that working of God. And God is speaking to us. God is reaching out to us because he wants to, he wants to do a work in us. He wants, to, he wants to bring forth a David in this hour that will step into fullness, that will that will that will step into, to begin to reign and, and reign over all of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so that's where I believe we are in now. The pressures that are coming, the challenges that we have had. And even as a people, this move, this movement, we've had lots of challenges. The last couple of years have been tough for us. The enemy have thrown all kinds of things at us and at this work. The enemy have tried to tear the leadership apart. The enemy has tried to drive a wedge among us. The enemy has tried in all in a bid to make us miss this timing. But I'm thankful to God that God has been faithful. God has brought us to this point. And that's why we need to settle down and pick it properly. Because it took God and the mercy of God to bring us here. Because we needed to get to this point. Because this is the point where we negotiate the bend. This is the point where David became king over all of Israel. This is where what God has spoken to us in secret, we're going to speak it on the housetop. This juncture that we are, this point, if you look at the significant age of 30, which is the number of maturity. David was anointed. He had so many experiences in his father's house. He moved into the courts of Saul. He raised an altar in the wilderness. He moved from pillar to post. And, and we've had, we've come a long way, brethren. We've come a long way in the experiences that God has led us through. We've had our brother going through some of the experiences, the mission work, the depths of the word of God, the revelations that we've had, the, the, the power and the anointings and the everything that we have gone through in these 30 years. And God is saying to me that we've gone through and we've come to Judah. We've been anointed in Judah. We've had God's help, but God is saying this point where we are gotten to is the point that will change everything for us. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and for that reason, brethren, we need to, we need to get our acts together. 
we, we shouldn't be in a hurry at all. We should, we should take that which God is speaking to us. We should listen carefully. We should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. I hear a call in the spirit. I hear an alarm that has gone forth. And God is waking his people up. He's sorting his own people up. And getting us ready uh, for this great day that is ahead of us. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, the enemy tries to, to, to hinder the people of God. He tries to bring pressure to try and stop the movement. Anytime there is going to be movement, there will be pressure. Um, Revelation 12, he said, I saw the sun-clothed woman. That woman was what? In travail. She was in travail to bring forth. And the dragon was before that woman. And that travail was what brought forth the man-child. Praise the name of the Lord. And that man-child was caught up to God and to the throne of God. Praise the name of the Lord. But the woman was in travail. And the Lord says the travail that we are seeing all around us is for a purpose. David said, in my distress, O Lord, thou hast enlarged me. He said, as soon as Zion travailed, she did what? She brought forth. And I see the travailings that have gone forth. I see the pressure. I see the attack of the enemy. I see the enemy trying to pull us this way and pull us that way. All because of what is ahead and what is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. But we thank God for the grace of God and for the mercy of God that God has brought us here to this point. And by the grace of God, I believe that God is going to move force forward. By the grace of God, we are going to step into the fullness of God's purpose and of God's plan. We are going to manifest the glory of God and the plan of God in the earth today. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe that this walk is not, it's not a sideline walk. It keeps coming to me. And it came up in one of the prayers that uh, Brother Richard picked up. This is not a sideline walk. This is the walk. It's in fact the main thing. And there is nothing else other than God's plan and God's vision for the church of God that is expressed in this walk, in this timing in this season. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why this David must rule over all of Israel. That's why God will give us all that it takes. God will re-equip us and prepare us to reign, to take over authority and to rule. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord Adonai, he said, sit down at my right hand until thy enemies are made what thy footstool. He said, the Lord will send that rod from out of Zion. And that rod will do what? Will rule in the midst of the enemies of the Lord. For upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, brethren. And the house of Jacob will do what? Will possess their possession. He said, saviors shall proceed. Saviors, deliverers shall come forth out of Zion. This is that Zion, brethren. The time has come. He said the creations are on tiptoe. The creations are groaning. He said God subjected the creation to bondage. But then he left a window. He, he left a window that someday, sometime, these creations will be set free. And the Bible says these creations are waiting. For the manifestation of the sons of God. And I believe there's a great need in our land. There's a great need all around us. There's so much pressure all around us. And God is waiting for this house to get its acts together. God is waiting to align us properly. God is waiting to bring this David up. Hallelujah. You know David traveled a long distance. He, he was anointed when he was right about 12 years old in his father's house. And he did not 
sit on the throne until he was 18. He was 30. So about 18 years or more elapsed without him. God was just training him and leading him through one thing after the other. And, and you know, God guided his steps and led him because the word of God has gone forth on him that he was going to rule over all of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I believe that God is bringing forth this David in this hour and in this time. I believe that God is raising a people who will, who will move. And I'm not talking about just this expression alone. I am talking about the work of God. I'm talking about the time, the timing of God. I'm talking about the season of God. I'm talking about what God is doing. We are part of that work and this move this work is part of that expression that great work that god is bringing forth in the land hallelujah david waited for that time to come he had problems he had problems with jonathan he had problems with people who betrayed him he had problems moving from one cave to another he was in fug he was he became a fugitive himself Saul put a curse on him and they were actually looking for him. And David came to a point where he believed he was compassed about with death and cloud of darkness was all around him. It looked like the vision had come to an end to David. This bright vision when we started some 30 years ago, it looked to some of us like the manifestation of God's, God's sons will be five years time. Some of us came like wayfaring men. We came and abandoned everything. We spent everything we had. We, we gave our whole life. We did everything and it was like this thing would happen in another five years. We walked and walked. Five years came and it didn't happen. We said, okay, give it another five years. This thing will happen in another five years. And, and there was zeal in the house. There was, there was genuineness. You know, we, we didn't have, we didn't have ought in our hearts against one another. We didn't, we didn't think of anything. We just thought of the brethren. There was koinonia. There was, there was fellowship. There was depth. It, it didn't matter to us the length of the meeting. It didn't matter who preached. It didn't matter who ministered. It didn't matter how short or how long the message was. It was just God. It was, it, was, it, was, it was really beautiful. It was like the manifestation of God. The sons was going to come immediately. But then it didn't come. And then some began to get weary. <laughs> the Bible says while the bridegroom tarried. It said while the bridegroom tarried. What happened? The virgins, they slumbered and they did what? And they slept. He said, hope that is deferred brings what? Weariness to the soul. And, and David became weary too, my friends. He became weary. He became tired. He knew that there was prophecy on his head. He knew that God called him. When God rejected Saul, Saul was king over Israel. And when God was going to replace him, he replaced him with a king. That was going to be king over all of Israel. But then he didn't start immediately. It took some time. David had to learn the ropes. He had to learn what it means to, to, to fellowship. He had to learn what it means to submit. He had to learn what it means to, to be patient. He, he had to learn what it means to build an altar in the, in the wilderness. Right there in the caves. He had to learn what it means to, to, to just honor God all the time. He had bands of men around him that, that were, that were non-entities, that were rogues. And they became David's men. And David had to walk with all of that in a bit to do what? To train him. And friends, I can tell you that we have come a long way. We've had lots and lots of pressure. We've had lots and lots of experiences. Many of us had gone through all kinds of things. Many of us have been, you know, taken through the crucible as well, as a body, as a move. The move has been tried severely. 
We came close to going our different ways. We came close. The pressure was much. Hallelujah. But God was faithful. God had a plan. And, and that's why I'm excited about this point that we're in right now. And I'm saying that we need to, we need to, we need to get it together well. It, it's not always in a man's lifetime that you have one, two, three, four chances. It's not always. It's not always. And that's why David also knew that he had to get it together. He had to wait for God's time. And it had to, it had to be done God's way. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and that time came. Hallelujah. That time came. It was outside the hand of David. But God has a time. In the fullness of time, God will make all things beautiful. Hallelujah. He said, he said even though we're here of all things, he said, but now it doesn't appear it would be. God has set us on that to us, but there is a time appointed by the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. And when that time comes, the Son will be announced. Praise the name of the Lord. David waited for that time. He waited for that time in God. Hallelujah. That season, the night season came and the watchman, the burden of Duma, he said he called unto me out of Seir. Seir means tempest. Seir means trouble. Hallelujah. The burden of Duma is a tough burden. Duma is the, is the first uh, uh, is, 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 is the first son of uh, Esau, you got it right. So it's, it's, it's the world, it's carnality. It's, it's the pressure of the world. That's the burden of Duma. Hallelujah. And he called me out of Seir, Seir, war, tempest, trouble. Hallelujah. And that's what we've been going through all around us. Hallelujah. But he said, watchman, watchman, how far has the night gone? How long is it going to be before it's daybreak? Praise the name of the Lord. And he said, the morning comet. He said, if you will return, it's time to do what? To return. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, I, the Lord, I shall return. And when I return, I shall rebuild the broken tabernacle of David. I believe that this is the day of the Lord's return, brethren. I, I believe that we, we are treading on a way spiritual people, brethren. This is a spiritual movement. We need to discern the times. Jesus turned to his disciples and the Pharisees at that time. He said, you hypocrites. He said, when it, is, when it is morning and the clouds and the sky are red, you say in your heart, it's going to rain. And it rains. He said, when it is evening and, and the sky is red, you say the weather and the sky is going to be foul today. And you are right. He said, you hypocrites, you are able to discern the sky, the face of the sky, and the face of the earth. He said, but you are not able to do what? Discern the signs of the times. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, this is a time in God. This is a season in God. And we need to discern the times, brothers. We need to look beyond our nose and look at God. Hallelujah. We need looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to look unto him because there is a time in God and this is the time. And when the time comes, God takes over and he begins to do the things himself. Praise the name of the Lord. God begins to move. David had tried. Some of us, have, we had had all sorts of things. We've tried this method, tried that method. We've done this, we've done that. We have, we, have, we have walked and walked so hard, brethren. And, and, and God has helped us with much passion and with much work. But God is saying that I am going to step in. Hallelujah. God is saying, there remain it, therefore a rest for the people of God. He said, let us labor so that we can do what? Enter into that rest. He said, if we enter into that rest, then we do what? was seized from all of our labors. This is the eve of the rest of God, brethren. 
We're standing at the eve. And that's why there's so much pressure. That's why we had had, we had, had it so difficult and so tough. Because we are at the eve of God's rest. Praise the name of the Lord. It's always tough. It's always difficult. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that day is going to break. Night is far spent. The day is almost breaking. Praise the name of the Lord. That day is at hand. And the Lord will give strength and grace to his own people. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why I want us to rise up. That's why I want us to wake up from our slumber. That's why I want us to rededicate ourselves to God. That's why I want us to know God is leading us somewhere. And it's beyond just us here, friends. This walk is a global walk, friends. This is, this is, this is the walk. This is the move. There is nothing else other than this walk. Praise the name of the Lord. The spirit of this walk is the spirit of the visitation of God in these last days.